Okay, so here's the here's our first slide. So like we have just introduced all the member and the outline, the summary and the introduction is uh, Abraham. So we just keep that, okay? Okay, now Jay, you, you start first, okay? Uh, so, this other course we're given from the American CEO at the start of the business, and we offer this course to the variable fixed and it's a fixed cost of the same expense office service, supplies, general expenses. <clears throat> the total of them was 275k. Where the cost was direct material, direct label. <clears throat> um, sales commission per unit advertising, and the total of was that $11 per unit. And mixed cost was factory ordered, other factory units, which was 50,000 units for first, and it was 235k for that. 70,000 units, 435k, and we have to use them. Um, we have to use the Highland method to find out the other, vari other variable cost as well as the fixed cost. The variable cost was the difference between cost, which was 495k minus the difference between cost and the quality. Um, the fixed cost was total cost minus volume times by the variable cost. And the Highland method uses the lowest volume of the stock in market. Lowest volume minus the highest volume of the stock. Next. Uh, the, the lowest point of the volume was 50,000 units, which and the highest was 90,000. So we had to minus them, which was 40,000. And the cost for them was 375k for the lowest volume, and 495k for the highest. And the subtraction of that is 125k. So we had to divide 125k to the 40,000 to find out the variable cost, and it was three dollars per unit. And fixed cost was the total minus the Volume minus volume times by the first is forty one by k minus that three times ninety thousand, which equals to two to five k, and the total variable cost was the total. And we have to keep going next. Next. So that we have to add the other factory orders. In the fixed and variable cost that we found from the Highland method, so the for the fixed cost was 225k, so that adds up to the total of 500k fixed cost and three dollars added into the variable cost, which is 14 dollars per unit now. The projected net income, which was we have to find out the projected net income with the volume of 19 given, which was sold at 20 dollars per per unit. And the total sales was volume times for the price, which was 90,000 times 20 equals to 1,800,000. And the total cost was total fixed cost plus the total variable cost, which is 500K plus 14 times 90,000, which is 1,750,000. Mm. And the project in income was total sales minus total cost, which was 1,800,000 1, minus 1,760,000, which is 40,000. The net project in income was 40,000. And the project, uh, the net income marathon one and was 200,000, which is less by 160k. So we had to find out the units needed for the for the achieve of uh, the to achieve the 200,000 net income. So we had to find out the contribution margin per unit to start with, and which is price minus the variable cost, which is 20 minus 14 equals to 16. Or we could divide the contribution margin. Contribution margin in dollars, divide that by the sales margin in sales. Oh no, uh, divide that by the unit sold. And 
commission margin ratio equals to margin per unit might divide that by the selling price, which is six dollars divided by twenty, which is thirty thirty percent. And sales leader well, for the formula for sales leader was fixed cost plus the targeted net income, the targeted income, which is two hundred thousand. Divide that by the uh, commission margin ratio. So it's seven thousand seven hundred k divided by thirty percent, which equals to two million three hundred thirty three thousand three hundred thirty three. Total sales needed was to get a net income of two hundred thousand dollars in twenty nineteen. I think so. Yeah. Wait, no. This is. Yeah. Do I miss that? Nice no, study. It's fine. Commission margin by uh, well, I've already gone through that. So break even point. Well, we need to find out the break even point and the stuff as well. Break even point in units was total fixed cost divided by the commission margin per unit, which is five hundred thousand divided by six, which equals to eighty three thousand three hundred thirty three units to be sold to get a break even point. And break even point in dollars was total fixed cost divided by the commission margin ratio, which is five hundred thousand divided by thirty percent. That equals to one million six hundred and sixty six thousand six hundred and sixty seven dollars to get a break even point, which is no sales and no expense, which is no profit. To get no profit. Guys, just a minute. Go to the last the previous one, please. That is the fourteen. That is not seventeen. The previous one. That's the yeah, look. This is the fourteen. Oh, you can call this one. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, the previous one. I need to start from the previous one. Yeah. It's only, it's only one you are I'm going through a few slides in this project. The first one that I would like to explain to you is about the contribution. It's about the contribution margin. As you can see, the contribution margin for per unit is six dollars. It means that uh, the amount of money that each unit brings us to pay for our fixed cost is six dollars. And after we minus our variable cost from our sale price, we have $6 to cover our fixed cost for every unit. And as you can see, last one please, and as you can see in the break even point and break even units, that shows that last one, yes. In the break even units, we got 83,333 units. It means in the in this point, our sale and our cost both are zero, and every unit that we produce after 83,333 will give us profit. Next slide. One of the company asked us if they have reached the $200,000 target income in the financial year. Accounting to the modern circumstances, you can see that the same quantity they can they needed to be sold is 116,667 units. In this stage, you can get the target income. As you can see in the income statements, it is contribution margin income statements. The thing is, in this income statements, the variable cost and the fixed cost showing differently. And the, that is the separate list things that shows we've got variable cost and fixed cost in the separate things that it shows our contribution margin that can cover our fixed cost and give us the net profit $40,000. Next point. So for improving the company, we are giving them the full potential proposal that we call them proposal A, B, C, D. In proposal A, we're increasing our, uh, we're decreasing sale price by when could you put it back? Last one, please. Yeah. Previous one, please. 
Yes, in proposal A, we reducing the sale price by 20%, which increase our sale price by 30%. In the proposal B, we increase the sale commission to increase our sale value. In the proposal C, we change product feature, which in this case, is design package, we design the package, and we go for more machinery, so it lose the variable cost. And the proposal D, we raising quality and raising price, and include advertising. Next point. I'm going through the proposal A. As you can see, the original units that we can sold was 90 and the projected will be 117, uh, which is 170,000. And, uh, and we cutting our sale price. That's in this case, our projected sales will go up, but the thing is, because it's pushed the variable cost and it goes up too, and our fixed cost is the same, so we will go to the less profit and in this case it is a loss and also our contribution margin is reducing by two dollars it means we can cover our fixed cost less than the original situation and our break even units will goes up so it means we need to produce more units to get to start to get the profit thank you And this is the graph for proposal A. As you can see, we have the total sale cost and uh, other things in the graph, and uh, it uh, shows all the variable costs and all the fixed costs that we discussed about that. And then in the next graph also, you can see the uh, break-even points that it should be $125,000 unit with the break-even points. Thanks. Okay, now moving to proposal B. Um, first, of, uh, first of all, as you can see in the top, uh, Marathon is saving $77,000 um, of the total fixed cost because the costs can be reduced from uh, $97,000 to $20,000. Um, by raising the sales commissions from zero point seven five dollars to two dollars, the projected contribution margin per unit is now um, four point seventy five dollars, as you can see in the fourth last line. Despite the higher break-even point than original, Marathon is making one hundred seventy-five thousand five hundred dollars uh, in profit. Um, as a uh, now no, one more sentence. I have four sentences for the last. Yeah, as a result, uh, marathon is rewarded with its courage to risk because there is an increase of only thirty-three point two one percent compared to the sales um, volume of forty percent. As we can see on the top third line, yeah, is the next slide. Oh, you can see the diagram, the red circle, and the diagram represents the break-even point. This is where the line curves of total costs and total sales intersect. And also on this point, the orange curve exceeds. Oh no. Yeah, maybe I can say that. Also on this point, the orange curve exceeds the zero dollar mark. Yeah, and the associated value, uh, X value of the projected net income line um, is 89,053. And um, so we can say Arathon has this number of parts to the man to make profit. And now number three, I propose to see. Okay, proposal C. Uh, in this situation, the manager wants to redesign the packaging appearance. So this will lead to a reduction of the uh, direct uh, material cost, the direct labor cost to 3.3 respectively. However, uh, this will increase the fixed 
factory overhead because we are adding additional uh, depreciation of new equipment. So, uh, let's go to the calculation for further analysis. Uh, because we make no changes to sales volume and selling price, so the uh, the projected revenues would be the same as the original situation. Uh, but the fixed cost and the variable cost are changed, so we have the total cost of uh, $1,635,000, but this is lower than the original cost, so this is a good thing. So this will lead us to a profit of $165,000. So this, this amount is much, much bigger than the original net income of $40,000. So uh, this strategy has uh, really improved the, the performance of Marathon. And the contribution margin per unit, we have, uh, we have $7.00 and $7.00 and a half. So this means that after covering variable costs, we still have a uh, six, uh, seven dollars and a half to cover fixed cost. Uh, so this is uh, a positive thing. And this is the same for contribution margin ratio. We still have a uh, seven thirty seven point five percent left from the original cost uh, to cover fixed cost and for profit. Mm. For the break even point, uh, could you please go forward? So, as you can see from the chart, there's a red dot. That's the break even point. So, this equal to 68,000 units. And it's also equal to uh, of uh, $1,360,000. So, it means that to be start earning money, uh, the company needs to sell more than 68,000 units and generate a profit, uh, generate a revenue of more than one, $1,360,000. So, yeah. okay. so moving on to proposal B, proposal D. So it suggests Marathon to improve the quality and um, spend more in production costs and also raise the customer awareness by boosting advertising fixed expense. So meaning that we can observe increase in both fixed costs and variable costs. So in specific, fixed cost rise refers to the increase by $40,000 in fixed component of other factory overhead costs and also the significant double in fixed advertising costs. Um, moreover, the total variable cost per unit increased by 1.5 in total, which is contributed by changes in direct labor and direct material costs. So we got such increase in the total cost. However, the sales still exceeds expenses thanks to the increase in both price and volume and resulting in the improved profit of $173,000. Contribution margin per unit will also reach $6.5 as a consequence of the change in price um, being larger than the increase in variable cost per unit. However, the percentage of contribution margin and price per unit decreases, meaning that raising sales to cover fixed costs after extracting variable costs actually decrease in turn of proportion. And as you can see, the red circle of the graph represents for the break-even point from the production plan, Marathon must produce at least 19,385 units and approximately 1,988,462 dollars to avoid loss. Um, Ranking base of profitability. The first one is proposal B, that is would give us uh, a proper, uh, a proper net income of one hundred seventy five thousand five hundred, and the second one would be proposal D, is going to give us uh, one hundred seventy. 
$3,000 and the third one is the uh, proposal C. It will give us a net income of $165,000 and the fourth one actually is with this one the negative income of $32,000. Based on probability, uh, the four proposals are ranked from top to bottom. And the, in this table, we can see the difference between um, proposal A to T, uh, A to D, based off the initial plan, uh, the net income of $40,000 and the, the targeted plan of $200,000. As we see, not proposal are not get uh, the $200,000 profit. Hmm. I think uh, before analyzing an accounting report, uh, it's important to uh, clearly determine fixed cost and variable cost respectively. However, there are some business has the cost which ha which are both, which means they are both variable cost and fixed cost. So uh, we are highly recommended to use high level method to uh, clearly uh, classify variable cost and fixed cost for uh for more accurate analysis further um turning to the original situation if marathon only sells ninety thousand units uh to get a target profit of two hundred thousand so, uh, this is impossible they can't do that so uh we can so we have to discuss on the four proposal, but uh, plan A would uh, definitely be removed because it would generate a lot of income. So uh, none of the business will share that. So we uh, still have a proposal B, C, D to concern, but uh, they actually improved the performance, but none of them can reach a target profit of $200,000. So now there would be a recommendation for a better strategy to uh, get a target profit. Okay, so for the recommendation, if Marathon tends to apply any proposal uh, based on the profitability, then we highly recommend it to apply proposal B since the, the profit would be 1000 Seven one hundred seventy five thousand and five hundred, which is the highest among the four proposals. However, um, it still cannot reach um the target of two thousand two hundred thousand dollars. Therefore, we recommend Marathon not to apply any proposal, but keep it initial plan and just increase the volume to one hundred uh sixteen thousand and six hundred sixty seven unit to achieve. Okay. Hmm. That's the end of our presentation. Well done, guys. Oh my god. Oh <laughs> done. Okay, but uh some problems. So Jay, Jay, you hear me? Yes. Um uh, you don't have to read like every number in the slide just tell them the formula because everything has shown on the on the slide so for example you said net income total cost uh, no total sales minus total cost right so you just have to say that net income would equal to total sales minus total cost and then you say the number of the net income too don't have to like read the number what total cost or what is total sale Everything has to be shown on the slide. And for, wait, wait, we go online. He stopped that. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Go offline now. We finished. We're done. Okay.